Sam here from Sheridan Computers. A few days ago, I did a video on how to install Trino Scale, or Community Edition, 25.10 Gold Eye, the latest version as of the 25th of November, 2025. That video walked through setting up some Samba shares, NFS shares, and creating users. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the apps available on Trino Scale, but more importantly, we're gonna look at how to install them, how to set up data sets, and the permissions correctly. Sheridan Computers. IT, communications, support. If you'd like to hire us for IT consulting, head across to our website at sheridancomputers.com. We logged into the TrueNAS dashboard. This is where I left off in my previous video, where I installed TrueNAS on my Ugreen NAS. Uh, and as you can see, we're on 25.10.0.1, which is the latest as of the 25th of November, 2025. So let's get started and install some apps. The app that I want to install is SyncFing. So SyncFing allows you to share files between devices. Now you'll notice up here it says app service is not configured. So what we need to do is go to configuration, choose pool. I only have one pool in this case, tank. And then choose, and now it's configuring apps. So what that basically does is choose a pool, some space where we can actually install the applications themselves. And you can do discover apps. And if we search for sync thing, for example, it's there. But rather than doing it the default way, what I like to do is create a data set for each app. If you was going to install sync thing on a Docker container on a separate machine, you create a volume for it. And I suggest you do the same thing for TrueNAS. Now notice tank is unencrypted. Now I actually want an encrypted data set for this. So I'm going to add a new data set. I'm going to call it sync thing. It's easy to um, name them after the app that you're going to install. Just so you can track everything and you know what is saved where. Data preset, we want apps. And I'm going to go to advanced options. You can just click save if you don't need to encrypt anything. I'm going to go to advanced options. And where we have encryption options here, I'm going to untick inherit and I want it encrypted. And I'm going to change it to passphrase um, just because it's easier. So I'll put your passphrase in, confirm it. I'm going to scroll down, bash that save button. So now you can see we have our sync thing data set. It is encrypted, it's unlocked at the moment. When we chose the preset of apps, what that actually does is if we scroll down here to permissions, you can see the user apps has been given access to this data set and we can see all the users that do have access, but the apps need access to it themselves. So now we have our data set for sync thing. We're going to install sync thing. So we've got to hit apps, discover apps, sync thing, going to click it to install it and then install most of the configure option, configuration options here we can leave but there are a couple of important ones so time zone is probably important for sync thing this user id and group id 568 and 568 that actually maps to the apps user so don't change these otherwise you'll have permission problems if we scroll down to network configuration, I'm just going to leave this to publish on the host for external access so I can access it myself. TCP port, I'm just going to leave these at the defaults. Now where we have a certificate, you can click on this for help anyway. The certificate's used for sync things, so this will make us connect via a secure connection, HTTPS, as opposed to unencrypted HTTP. And this storage configuration, as I said, by default, TrueNAS wants to install apps in its own place, but that's not what we want. We want to use our own data set. So from here, we're going to choose host path. So path that already exists on the system, which is the data set that we, that we created. And then we choose the data set here. So sync thing. And now I'm just going to install it. And now it's deploying. Okay, so we've got our app sync thing. And back under data sets, we've got our data set sync thing. So if I just want to 
create snapshots of that particular data set, I can do, and that's the advantage of breaking them down. Plus, it's easier to find where your data is stored. So if I go back into my apps, I'm going to launch sync thing. And we get this warning. GUI authentication, set username and password. And no, I don't want to do anonymous reporting. So this is because we uh, exposed it to the host. Anybody can access this, so we need to set a password. So settings, GUI, put in a username and a password, and save. And the warnings have gone, but we'll have to re-authenticate. And now at this stage, we're ready to start creating folders. So I'm going to add a folder, call it general, and then folder path, I generally give it the same name. We can do file versioning if we want. So simple file versioning, keep the last five versions. Ignore patterns for any files that you want to ignore. And then under advanced, we can set it to whether it's send and receive, send only, receive only. So this can be important if you're only want to receive and you don't want it to be overwritten no only want it to send um, so we'll just leave that hit save so now we've got this unshared folder and if I edit it go to sharing we've got no devices that we can share it with but what we can do is show ID now if I scan this from my phone in sync thing I close that we should get a pop-up in a minute saying new device detected. So we've got this new device, which is my phone. When I just scan the QR code, I do add device. And give it a friendly name. Set the sharing options of its introducer, general, auto accept. So it automatically accepts folders shared from that device. Um, this is not a sync thing tutorial this is a tutorial on how to install apps so we'll just save that and now if i go back into general edit sharing i can now share this folder with my mobile phone you can see it now says up to date and then where it says disconnected down here i'll change to connected in a second so now this is up to date as well and then we can click on that device we can see our download rate, local state, listeners. That's basically how you install an app on TrueNAS. Let me come out of this. Now, if we want to destroy this, um, we can basically stop it. I can delete this. Now, remember, it's a Docker container. So that hasn't actually deleted our data and I can actually add it back in because our data set is not deleted, it's still here. I can actually add that back in. Install it. Leave all the permissions. Again, set the certificate. And our storage configuration set that back exactly as it was so host path and then choose mount tank sync thing install if we open the web ui you can see it's still got the same configuration that we previously had here's a folder that i created and we've not got any warning messages about the user authentication because them settings are still remembered if you do want to destroy an app and it's data. We do stop. Delete. Remove images. Now if I want to destroy the data as well, I would actually have to go into data sets. Choose sync thing. And delete it. Then ask to confirm the name. So the pool and the data set name. Confirm. And that will delete my data. So if I reinstall sync thing at this stage we'll have to set it up again just so you get the idea let's go ahead and install another one uh, so image we'll install this 
So before you create your data sets, if you look at the app that you're going to install, I'm not going to install it just yet. If we go down to the storage section, we can see we've got data storage for upload location and data storage for the database. So this one we can leave temporary, that's fine. So we need two data sets. So what I'm going to do, go into data sets. I'm going to add a data set. I'm going to call it image. And set it to apps. And just save that. I'm not bothered about it being encrypted, so that's fine. But what I'm going to do, so we needed two data sets. So under here, we're going to add another data set. I'm going to call it image db. And again, set it to apps. Return to pool list. Click on the image parent one. I'm going to do add data set. So image uploads. And then again, set it to apps. Save. And then we'll just return to pool list. So we've created the parent set, and then we've created the two child. So this will allow us to back the parent up, and it'll automatically back the child up as well, but image wants two locations. I'm sure it used to take a lot more than that. I'm going to go back into apps, discover apps, image, install. So we'll leave the name and everything. Obviously set your time zone. Machine learning type. If you have a... NVIDIA graphics card, then obviously you can choose CUDA. I don't, so I'm just going to leave that. Set a database password. So whatever you want. Don't use password one. Plug in face, endpoint, optional. This is not an image tutorial. Again, leave these because that's what maps to the app user and apps group. Going to publish on port for host for external access. I'll leave the default port of 3041. And again, this data storage, we're going to use host path. And this is for uploads. So I want tank image, image uploads. And then for the database storage, again, we're going to do host path. Mount tank image. Then want our DB data set. We'll quick look, I think this is, oh yeah. Automatic permissions. You can click on this. So it'll automatically set them if it's incorrect. It's a good idea for your database. And then we've got GP password, GPU password if we want. Again, this is not a image tutorial. It's just showing you how to install apps on Tunas. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, okay, so that didn't work because I'm not authenticated and I've obviously got Docker Hub limits. To fix that, you're going to have to authenticate. If you go to apps, uh, configuration, sign into a Docker registry, add registry, Docker Hub, and put your username and password in. So log in. Back into apps, let's do that again. Discover apps. Image, install. It's now deploying and running. And we can open the web UI. And welcome to image, get started. And then obviously put your email address in, username, password, and go ahead and log in once you've registered. And we can go ahead and set up. So choose a theme, dark, language. English, select privacy. So map relies on external tile service, version check, user privacy, Google Cast, so use storage template, which basically allows you to set your own storage up, go to backups, mobile app, done. Now we've got our image server. So let me just come out of this. So again, exactly as we did with sync thing we have our image app and on data sets we've got the image root data set and then the children here 
So again, it makes us easier to create snapshots. So I'll back these up as we wish. I hope that helped and give you a clear understanding of how to install apps on Tuna Scale, our community edition, and how to set up data sets and permissions. As always, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more Tuna Scale videos. In fact, if you do, leave a comment below and let me know what videos you'd like to see. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.